What is up guys? This will be a what's on my iPhone 4S video. I've gotten this video request after doing my what's on my iPad video and since I do this video pretty much every year, it's perfect time for me to do this this year. So this is my iPhone 4S, it's obviously white. It's running on AT&T and it's running 5.1.1 software. It's not jailbroken since I stopped jailbroken after iOS 5, but I'll give you just a quick tour of what's on my iPhone. So on my lock screen, it's pretty basic. I have a very simple wallpaper. It's actually of the iCloud icon. It's pretty simple, it's pretty cute, I think so. So my lock screen's pretty basic. It's just a picture of the iCloud icon. So even though I'm not the biggest fan of iCloud right now, I think the icon is super cute, but it's pretty basic. Fits me well. Slide to unlock. So my front page is actually pretty basic. Most of the stock apps are where they are when you first get the iPhone out of the box, but I'll go over the ones that do not come with the iPhone pre-installed. That's starting with the third row. I have a Facebook app and TweetBot, which are pretty much my most used apps just because I love social networks and stuff. Facebook, obviously, and TweetBot is my Twitter client of choice. I always switch between TweetBot and Twitter just because sometimes I just don't like the way TweetBot looks. I feel like the interface is a little bit dark and makes me need to raise the brightness of my iPhone screen a little bit, but you can't really beat its functionality and how smooth it is and all the little graphics and stuff. It's still probably the best Twitter app you can get on iOS. Next to it, I have Evernote, which is a, a note-taking app at the most basic level, but it syncs for a lot of devices. It's amazing organizational, organizationally, and I use it a lot when I'm in school to take notes, to do to-do lists, and also when I was applying to college. Um, if you haven't applied to college yet, you get a lot of different logins and different passwords and different forms and stuff, and it's really difficult to manage it. I highly recommend that you use Evernote to manage all of that just because you can give each school a label so when you go back in and you need that password for you know that form or that tuition thing, you always have it. Moving down to the bottom row, still stock apps, you know, settings, reminders, and then I have Flipboard and Pocket which go hand in hand with each other. It's the main way I read tech news these days, so every morning I wake up, I go through Flipboard, I have different tech categories like Apple News, technology, and stuff, and whenever I find an article that I want to read, I save it over to Pocket. And then if I, if I decided to read it, I would read it then through Pocket just because it takes out all the advertisements and all the really horrible formatting of all the different websites. Or I save it for later when, I when I'm about to go to sleep and then I read Pocket through my iPad. Um, it's the perfect combination. I used to not be a read it later person where I didn't understand the reason about doing that, but it just makes everything so, so much cleaner and simpler to read news and just a little bit more enjoyable and experience. Down here on my dock, I just have the basic apps as well. Um, I have phone. Mail, and then I have Chrome, which I replaced with Safari. I already love it a lot more. It's only 1.0 of software, but it runs pretty smoothly. I like all the little transition effects. But probably my favorite functionality is the tab syncing. So if I'm surfing on my MacBook and I want to see something on my iPhone, um, the tabs are already populated on my iPhone, so I can just easily open it. And then the last icon or on my dock is the music folder, and I have music, Pocket Cast, which is my... Uh, regular way of listening to podcasts since I actually listen to a lot more podcasts than I do music. Pandora, Pandora, and then the Apple Podcast app, which I just have to try it out. Right now it's still really buggy, it freezes a lot, and it doesn't it doesn't remind you of new podcasts and stuff. So sometimes if I'm using that app, I just forget there's new podcasts. So hopefully Apple fixes it up because it has a pretty nice interface, but right now I'm gonna probably stick with Pocket Cast. So onto the second page, which are obviously the apps I use, I guess, second the most. Starting off with Alien Blue, which I heard is probably the best Reddit client you can get on iOS, and I probably can agree it's so nice, especially on the iPad, but I have it on my iPhone. I'm not a big Redditor, and you know, I'm not really in, you know, I'm not really into the culture and stuff. I just casually browse and sometimes read comments and look at cat gifts, but it's not I'm not too big of a Redditor, so I don't know too much about it, but I like reading the news from it and reading commentary and stuff. Zite, which Flipboard actually replaces, is another like technology, not technology, but news application. So you put in all the interests you have in news and it gets all the different sources for you. The only reason why I don't like it as much anymore is it hasn't been really doing well with sources. I feel like a lot of the news sources, they don't curate. So a lot of them are sometimes inaccurate or poorly written and it's just not really worth reading. But I still have it if I'm really bored and I want to read a couple of different news sources. WhatsApp, which is a chat client between iPhone, BlackBerry, uh, Windows Phone 7. I kind of like to think about it as the BBM for all smartphones, just because you can do statuses and emoticons and stuff between different platforms. But I know everyone now these days probably uses iMessages. Here I have iPhone apps, which are the apps I don't use that come and I can't delete off my iPhone, and a couple of different Apple apps. So I have all these apps, you know, Safari, Calculator, all that stuff. And then down here I also have the Apple Store app. 
the Cards app, which I actually used once, which is pretty cool, and Find My Friends. Moving along, I also have a utilities folder, which I use a little bit more. I have Airport Utility for the Airport Extreme I have in my living room just to update it every once in a while or to run a diagnostic if it's not working properly. I have Speed Test, which just measures how fast the internet is. Uh, find my iPhone, of course, which is perfect because if I ever do lose my iPhone or ever get stolen, I can actually track it. And then iDisk, which I strangely still have on my iPhone, even though iCloud, I think, closed down officially two days ago or yesterday. So I should really delete that because iDisk was horrible. Uh, moving on, I have Contacts, Newsstand, and then I have Soundhound, which is, um, you know, identifies the song if you don't know. So if you hear it over the radio, you just press a button and it gives you the song name and gives you the option to buy it as well through iTunes and stuff. Dropbox, which is probably my used, most used app when I'm in school, just because it has all my homework files, all my school files, backs them up and it syncs them over the cloud. So if I ever forget to print out my homework or I need to email something really quickly, or if I'm working on a really large project with a lot of different people, I use Dropbox. It's amazing. Here I have my social slash photo folder, which is holds my social networking and photo apps. So I have Tumblr, Instagram, Frametastic, uh, which is just a way of putting more than one photo in the frame and then you upload it through Instagram, of course. Uh, Skype and Tango are my two video chatting apps. I like Skype more, but a lot of people just use Tango just because it's a little bit easier to use. Camera Plus to edit photos. Uh, 360 Panorama, which is a panorama app. Um, I actually got a lot of compliments from this app when I went to Europe. Um, no, no one I really knew had this kind of app, so when we were climbing up this mountain and had a beautiful view of the landscape and the castle, I took a giant panorama and put it on Facebook, and people were just amazed that I came from a cell phone. iPhoto, of course, edit photos, uh, Camera Plus, or Camera Dot, which is Facebook's camera app. I really wish they used this interface and the speed of the app on the actual Facebook app just because the Facebook app for iPhone, or I heard for Android too, is just atrocious. Uh, Google Plus, which has a beautiful app, but sadly, not a lot of people I know personally use it a lot, so I rarely ever check it. And then Foursquare. And then I have eBay and Amazon, which are my main shopping apps. And then I have my games folder. So with my games folder, I have Tiny Wings, which is a really simple game. Where's My Water, which is a puzzle game. Scribbnauts, which is probably one of my favorite games for the iPhone. It's kind of like you're given different scenarios or problems and you have to type in the, the objects that you want and to solve the problem. It sounds simplistic and it looks kind of kitty, but it's just so much fun just because the word engine they have in it is so great. Like, it's unbelievable. Uh, Zombie Build 2, Scrabble, NFL Flick Quarterback, which is a very simple game. You're just the quarterback and you have to throw the right amount of power and distance to uh, from a football and have someone catch it. Cut the Rope, Puzzle Game, Temple Run, and then game dev story, which is kind of like um, it's kind of like Sims, but instead of being just a person, you're a manager at a game studio, and you have to develop games that will get a lot of different customers and manage manage finances, and you know it's it's actually really fun. I really enjoy those kind of games. Uh, Capcom Game Center, which the only game I have installed is Puzzle Fighter, which is probably my favorite game to play when I was younger with my brother, so I have it on my iPhone. And then Scoops is a really fun, uh, simple game where you just have to stack scoops of ice cream on top of each other. And then my last page of apps, um, probably I use the least, but I still use them sometimes. First one is Tune Master, which is a uh, instrument tuning application. So I use this when I tune my violin, but it works with guitar and stuff, and it's probably the cleanest interface. And it's also free, too, so really recommended if you're a musician. Yelp, which is for restaurant reviews. Study Blue, which is an app I've been using a lot this year when I discovered it. It's actually a flashcard app, and it's actually really cool just because it syncs to the cloud, so you can have an edition of your flashcards on your computer, on your iPhone, on your iPad. And whenever you need to study them, they'll keep them in really organized stacks and you can actually share the flashcards with the classmates. It's amazing. I stopped using paper flashcards this year and it's really just kept my desk more organized. It's kept me more organized. It's actually really helped me too since I, I studied first AP exams this year. Optimum, which is an application I use just to manage my DVR if I'm you know, out from my house and I need to record a television show. It's also a remote control so I can control my DVR. Uh, Facebook Messenger. Copilot USA, which is just a turn-by-turn -turn, uh, GPS application. I'll probably delete this after iOS 6 comes out since it does come with free turn-by-turn -turn navigation in the Maps application. Netflix and tr Apple Trailers, which is what I use to actually find out show times. It's probably the cleanest interface and I like it a lot. The Roku Remote, since I have a Roku box and not an Apple TV. Or I do have an Apple TV, but it's actually a first generation, so it can't do like Netflix and stuff. Uh, mobile mouse, which is a way I can control my computer using my iPhone. 
flashlight, which is a flashlight application. My basketball folder, I have the New York Knicks app, and then uh, Game Time, which is the whole NBA app, and I use that to manage when basketball is in season. Hopstop, which I use when I go into the city. I need to find how to get from one place in the city to the other. I'm really horrible at reading subway maps, so this app is really great for me because I just put in two locations, point A to point B, and it'll tell me which train to take, what time the train's coming, or what subway's coming, and stuff, and it's just, it's so easy. And then last is the weather channel, which I use to check storm information and weather advisory and such, since the Apple weather app does not do that. But that's pretty much it, guys. It's a pretty simple iPhone. I've been trying to keep it as minimal as, you know, as always, because if you've ever seen my older iPhone videos, I have a lot of apps back then, but right now I just realized I don't use that many apps all the time, so I'm just trying to keep it at a minimum. So if you have any questions about the apps I talked about today or any questions in general, please leave a comment down below, or you can always um, ask me through Twitter, which is probably the fastest way to get in touch with me, twitter.com slash the Macintosh one. Also, feel free to leave uh, suggestions. I'm really needing some video suggestions, uh, comments, concerns, all that stuff. And if you do like this video, make sure you thumbs up because that helps me out and it makes me really happy. And that's pretty much it, guys. Hope you guys are doing well. I'll see you guys soon.